You know, we're not watching this guy. Why not? I have something else. But I will have you go to bed. What? Mom, you know what? <sighs> you're the little hippo. You're the little hippo. You're the little You're the little You're the little hippo. Yodeling, we're yodeling, yo yo yo. I gotta watch this show. Hype is down on WCW because it's WCW World Tour. Doing me a PlayStation. But I made the best of it with WWF Warzone and WCW Nitro. Nitro will cover next time. championship wrestling games that were exclusive to the Nintendo 64. Games that stand the test of time and are still fun to pop in and play today for gamers of any age. I didn't think I had time for a master's, but with WGU, I can move to an accrediting business degree as soon as I master the material. An online nonprofit university that lets me fix school around my schedule, I choose WGU. You might be asking yourself, man, why do I only hear great things about Nitro and Thunder like I hear about World Tour and Revenge? Why do those games get all the glory? We've come a long way since WCW Wrestling. PlayStation's WCW was the world's awesome. It was a fantastic foundation to build up, which what? the N64 games did perfectly. PlayStation fans couldn't wait to see how the 3D graphics immerse the world with its yeah, I hit gameplay. We hope for a few years. Yeah, it me. Whatever WCW and PlayStation well, okay, Henry, I hope I didn't hurt you. you. But he never had this in his pants. He took it out. He had a monkey in his pants. He took the monkey out and hit me with it. We'll leave him alone. He's just no, no, I came over here to give him what he wanted me to give him. Oh, he's in the room. 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 He's the cat and mouse was was set up to try to knock out blows. Who did last night down, didn't he? Yeah, what Henry said. Yeah, Henry was the one who 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 was the
Kyle Driver with Randy Savage trying to circle. Kyle Driver with Scott Hall. What did they do? Why mess with what you had? The first one was the foundation was there. It still was. They had a roof, they had a skylight. They didn't. They sold the foundation to Aki, who took it to Nintendo. Meanwhile, Inland Productions took over the PlayStation Department video games. Inland Productions, you know them, right? Before WCW Nitro, they created groundbreaking titles such as Bassmaster's Classic Game Edition on the PC. From which you literally can't find a single second of gameplay to show you. Before Bassmaster's Classic, Inland Productions worked on absolutely nothing. This body of work made WCW think they should hand them the keys to the kingdom and say, go for it, boys. Although every character has the same move set, each wrestler does have two signature moves specific to that, like DDP's spinning slam and DDP's other spinning slam. Pulling these signature moves off takes about as much sense as you imagine, as they're hidden under the buttons of other moves. Square punches, triangle chops, Using the previous special buttons, meaning that if you don't enter a trap, you'll end up throwing a punch or a chop instead. I should mention that the player can exploit the shit out of this game the same way in each and every match. Now, by spamming the same move all over, <coughs> over again. Look, let's be honest. The game is simply not fun to play. The AI always has a leg up because they don't have to think about pressing down square triangle to perform a backbreaker. They just do it. So on our quest to unlock more wrestlers, why wouldn't we spam the same move over and over again? It works. Honestly, it's nearly foolproof as long as you stay in rhythm. This part is hard to explain, but you can basically preload your move before your opponent is on their feet, making it impossible for them to escape. Oh, I forgot to mention there's no reversals in this game at all. Yeah, great. Want to hear something else that's ridiculous? If by some miracle you haven't beaten your opponent inside of 35 seconds and managed to run out the time limit, yes, your match will end and the victory will be awarded to whoever has done the most damage, like this is an MMA fight. I'd like to know if anyone who worked for Inland Productions had ever seen the WCW product before. If you wind up getting your ass kicked for some reason, there are two easy ways out. First off, pressing select at any point in the match will send someone rushing to the ring in support of you. <coughs> this, uh, this is actually pretty cool. If you've already called for help and are still in the danger zone, just run away and tap L2 to taunt your opponent. Taunting reloads your health bar a pretty decent amount. Alright, I realize I'm being extremely hard. Don't get me wrong, the game deserves it. It's wild as shit. But let's at least take a look at what it does well, right? For one, there are some really cool looking rings in this game. They're not all TV accurate. Halloween Havoc in real life never quite had a ring with this color scheme. But it's creative, and I like it, so we'll give it a pass. Being you know, real and sound pretty cool introducing us to the game. This gets old pretty quickly. The absolute number one best part of WCW Nitro, though, are the rants. Press circle on any wrestler on the character select screen and they'll launch into a promo. Hey, brother. Come to the Hollywood Hogan. Watch him climb the ring. Wow, the largest arms in the world. These are highly entertaining.
options to help you manage it, like leveling out your energy bills or picking your own due date. Learn more at www.com slash options. <laughs> What a legend. In terms of gameplay options, we've got single matches and tag team matches. Nothing special. Tournament, as it's called, is basically an arcade ladder. We're given a series of opponents and beating them all unlocks a new wrestler. Unlocking the full roster leads to shit like this. If you're wondering what the fuck you're looking at, no, I didn't switch games on you. This isn't an unreleased Clay Fighters title. This is still WCW. Holy Jesus Christ on a crutch do we need to talk about these unlockables in advance. Who did we unlock in versus the world? We had Jeff Jarrett, the Giant, Standard Selections. What about World Tour? We had Wrath, Glacier, DDP, Macho Man, Randy Savage. I am not kidding you when I say we can play as a fucking T-Rex and a bear against a snowman and Santa Claus in a fucking circus tent. This is the real deal. If dinosaurs and modern day animals and holiday icons are your team, why not load up a ghost versus Frankenstein in a graveyard? Or better yet, book the fucking Winter Wonderland for a main event featuring a skeleton versus an alien dressed like Scott Hall. What the fuck am I talking about? It doesn't end there. Leopard in between the clowns and the Sailor Moon knockoff and the May are actual legitimate wrestlers like the classic version of Sting, Randy Savage. Well, Ready, I just want to play Why not? Uh, Man, you haven't been asleep yet. Your minds, guys. This is real. Can I keep my eyes open? No, go to bed. Yeah. Get your ass to bed before I whoop your ass to bed. You never have a nightmare. I'll watch over you. You go to bed. So go lay down. Honestly, I thought the soldier would learn his 
lesson, if I let the military court handle this, and I said, not at this time. The end result was the soldier in question got 60 days of extra duty, reduction in rank, and forfeited a portion of his paycheck. Essentially, if he dealt with that, this would have been the end of the whole ordeal. And honestly, at this point, I assumed our little ordeal was over. Well, a few days after this punishment was decided on, which was not long after the incident itself, I was in the commissary, which is a grocery store on base, shopping, when the soldier who assaulted me saw me and began to insult me. I told him he needed to calm down, that he should learn his lesson, and he told me that I was a pussy who didn't know how to take a punch. I reminded him that I held back on destroying his life, and he told me he's already been punished and I can't touch him again. A store employee witnessed the entire encounter, and I got the employee detail and reported this interaction to his command. His commander told me that he had been ordered to not interact with me and would take action. His commander also recommended me that I involve the local authorities, since this soldier obviously is a his lesson. So I did. I contacted an attorney. The attorney was in sure because... Brilliant. What's another word? Ha ha. You are smartness. Honestly, I was mad. Wow. You're outsmarted. Great job. And it was not cheap. So nope. That is not a word either. Try again. Think. It's your brain superpower. The judge ended up granting me a Ha ha. Are you trying to make up words? No. That is not a try again. Ha ha. Are you trying no? That is not a word. Try again. Ha ha. Are you trying to make no? That is not a brilliant. What's another word? You are smartness. Honestly, it was obvious this guy. Let's play it. So I told the judge that I wanted to pursue criminal charges in addition to judgment. My lawyer later advised me that if I ever wanted to see the money, that I should pursue an international hold. An international hold is basically where the soldier would not be allowed to leave the country until I was paid my $80,000. Also, he told me that according to the agreement between the U.S. military and the U.S. military, the U.S. military would honor the international hold. Basically, the U.S. military would not protect him or move him away. Punishment. And by this point, I had paid my lawyer thousands of dollars, and I honestly didn't feel like paying thousands of dollars to get it done for So I said yes, I wanted to go forward with the hold. About a month later, the international hold was granted. The US military was informed of this. Two months after that, the criminal case was over, and the soldier was sentenced to 90 days in jail. By this point, the soldier had been moved onto the base and was buried by his commander. I remember the day I was informed the MPs handed him over to the local authorities to begin his 90 day jail sentence. Did I mention that he still owed me dollars I had heard nothing for a year, and then one day, I get called to the statement. I find out that the US military was in process of chaptering the soldier out of the US military. The commander also informed me that he was close to coming up with the money to pay me so he could have the international hold lifted. The commander also asked me if my lawyer would be willing to make a statement. I contacted my lawyer who also made a statement about the case. A few weeks later, his ex-wife contacted me. When this all started, I knew he was married, and I guess his wife decided to divorce him. She told me her ex-husband had the money and needed the details on how to pay me. I provided her the details, and a few days later, I got the payment and contacted his ex-wife to inform her that I'd been paid. She then asked me to send a receipt so he could have the international hold lifted and return to the States. I asked her how he got the money, and she said he maxed out his credit and also had his family help him out. Also, during this conversation, I found out that the army had chaptered him out of the military. And that's the last I heard from his side. Let's go! <laughs> You are the What else you got? Well, you can punch me in the face, lose your career, go eighty thousand dollars in debt and face some jail time. You know what? I'll take that instead. So since the post exploded on Reddit, OB has come back to address some questions in an edit. Am I worried about the guy getting revenge on me? No. He's back in the state, and I'm still overseas. He most likely has a criminal record, which means he won't even be allowed to pass immigration. Plus, he's set up, taking a new job, food, etc. And this happened many.
10 years ago. The cash amount seems high. The actual amount was in a foreign currency, and I rounded up and adjusted the figures, but it was very high. I did suffer from a black eye, and his behavior after the fact didn't help. Also, this incident happened in Asia, during a time period in which we had several other high-profile incidents with U.S. service numbers screwing up. Honestly, I expected around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Also, in this country. However, several people in the comment section have guessed correctly, and someone who was familiar with the incident PM'd me. So this blew up more than I intended. I will say this, it happened in Asia, in a country with a large troop presence. Why did I go so far? Honestly, that was never my intention. In fact, I decided to report to the military instead of going straight to the local authorities, because I agreed in doing so would allow us to deal with the issue and the punishment would be limited. I was right. He did learn his lesson. However, once I got the local authorities and my lawyer involved, it turned into something I didn't expect. Why did he get a jail sentence? A simple assault. So, in this country, they do not like to give suspended sentences to foreigners. I suspected a local national would have gotten a suspended sentence. I do have a national friend who was involved in an assault many years ago, and he got a 90 day suspended sentence. However, my guess is the judge gave him jail time instead of a suspended sentence because he was a foreigner. All right, so look, there's a hidden gem among all of these sketchy money-making apps, right? It's called Just Play. And look, this is super, super sweet. So they pay for playing. Very simple. They pay for playing their games every 24 hours. So you get paid... so ridiculous. Eventually my wife landed a job at one of the biggest employers in the city. Not only this, but this employer was the main supply of business to the employer that was so rude to my wife. Well, my wife is an extremely precocious and hardworking person and eventually got her bachelor's and then became the manager of the group. One of the manager's responsibilities was to decide who to send business to. My wife told her boss about the letter and what happened. Then they really shouldn't be trusted with their business. They stopped dealing with them. What did you know? The rude employer's business went way, way down. In fact, my wife would only give them business if they were the last ones who could be called. <laughs> a meeting with my wife and my wife's boss to show how much value they could add. The day of the meeting comes and everyone introduces themselves. Finally, Mrs. Tulip says that she's the manager and how nice it was to meet everyone. That's what my wife said. Excuse me, I just want to be certain. Are you Miss Ivanka Tulip? Ivanka says, yes, that's me. My wife replies, oh, excellent. I'm so happy to finally meet you in person. Thinking she had an in with my wife, Mrs. Tulip was over the moon. My wife let them carry on and tell her all about how much value they get. 
my wife says, well, thank you, but unfortunately, I feel we can't really give business to an employer who we feel has some ethical issues that need to be addressed. Ivanka is dumbfounded and says, excuse me, we were not made aware of any ethical issues. What are you talking about? This is when my wife brought out the letter that was signed by Mrs. Hewlett. My wife then tells them that if they treat potential hires this way, then it would be very hard for my wife to give them business and deny any future business with them. Mrs. Tula turned white, and you could hear a pin drop on the other side of the table. My wife thanked them for their time, but apologized and went back to her work. We don't know if anything happened to Mrs. Tula, but that business has since downsized and has gotten a reputation for being a poor choice to send business. This story is absolutely absurd. Who the heck sends out a letter like that to unqualified applicants? The manager totally deserved to leave her job right then and there for doing that piece of crap move. My friends, and that brings us to another end of our slash pro revenge. I hope you guys enjoyed some satisfaction today. And if you guys missed the last episode, an entitled Karen threats to call the cops on OP because he takes down a swing set in his backyard. Oh, what will her kids play on now? If you haven't seen the video, check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. From the family first. Yeah. So every touch will protect the first. Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to our Flash Pro where you guys come to hear some satisfying stories of people getting what they deserve. Guys, in this episode, you're going to hear three tales of revenge. Now, the first story, a big revenge on his boss over some tools. The second story, OP and his girlfriend get some satisfying revenge on the property manager. And we'll finish up with a story where OP gets revenge on their parents. My friends, I do hope you take these stories today. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for future revenge stories. If you guys like this kind of stuff, let's dive in, my friends. So, I'm a painter. I've worked for around five years. He's actually running a company for an owner who took a very hands off approach. He was essentially just a name and working capital and not much else. After getting an offer to work for a bigger commercial company, my old boss came to the realization that he would have to run his own company, as there really wasn't anyone else in house that was qualified. He resorted to acting like a child to try to make me stay, and I didn't. So after I left, he made me run around the world to receive my final paycheck, which I never even got, and he refused to return my tools spread throughout various jobs. As luck would have it, I got a really good job offer from an even bigger company shortly after. They wanted to subcontract me to do a very substantial amount of work. I took on the work, but realized I'm going to need more employees for that. And now, for revenge. So I go through, call each and every member of my old company, and offer them a $3 an hour raise to work for me, with all of them gladly accepted, having worked with me for years. I also convinced them to quit, giving no notice. Before they walked out of their job, they then asked me to grab only my tool from their respective jobs when they leave for the weekend on Friday. Monday rolls around, and my boss is getting calls left and right from supervisors, asking why nobody's at work and what's going on. The boss was so hands off that he didn't even have a point of control to ask them. He's essentially without employees, and little to no tools to complete any jobs at this point. So fast forward six months, his company has now closed. He's lost all of his work. His new addition to his house has come to a grinding halt halfway through construction, and he's hurting big time. I never got the last check, but I did get a great of workers and a company of my own, so I guess I'll call it even. You know what? The only thing I've learned from reading a lot of these revenge stories is that owners of companies should always pay out the last paycheck. A few hundred or a couple thousand less than you pay in the end. And trust me, I've learned a lot from reading these revenge stories. It never worked out for that After graduating college, my girlfriend and I moved to a new state where she was accepted into an engineering program. We found a lovely apartment style complex that advertised a hundred gigabits per second internet speed included in the price of a few other amenities. When 
we met the property manager, he seemed strict, but well-mannered. Nothing out of the ordinary. Still trying to leave. So, the first problem. Suddenly, walking into his office was not allowed without an appointment. I had come by to ask a question, saw him browsing social media, and figured he was just as available to us as he made himself seem when we first came by unannounced to view a model apartment. Nope. He refused to answer my question and asked me to make an appointment via email. The second problem. The terms of our lease included an attachment to complete within 48 hours of acceptance fee that details all discrepancies within the unit. We submitted the attachment via email around the 40th hour. The property manager responded that the terms recently changed from 48 to 24 hours, and since we had passed the 24 hours, we would be held liable for all found damages. When citing our copy of the lease, which explicitly stated 48 hours, he informs us that he signed an outdated copy and would need to make an appointment to come by the office and sign a new lease. The third problem, the internet speed, was not 100 megabits per second as advertised. It was less than 15 megabits per second off peak and about 5 on peak. We again contacted the property manager to explain, but were referred to make an appointment. forward and says, there are other <laughs> You are welcome to break the lease and leave. Hmm. People like you and your girlfriend. I had thought he was referencing our no-nonsense response to his nonsense, but my girlfriend believed he was speaking towards her, daughters, her being a black woman and myself, a white man. My girlfriend jokingly told me to check my privilege before getting and explained to me that we were experiencing discrimination at the very least. I did some research and discovered the property manager was for a large organization over several complexes throughout the country. I found their director of human resources on LinkedIn and made a connection. I then emailed the copies of all email correspondence, screenshots of the lease, pictures of the internet speed flag advertised by the writer, and more screenshots of online speed tests. We further noted his comments and the implications behind it. The human resources director replied within a few hours and promised us she would look into the issue. About two days later, the property manager called us and asked us to come by his office at a convenience. We showed up near the end of the day and sat down across from him. He then proceeded to ask us if we'd be willing to write a letter stating that we accepted his apology, despite him not yet offering said apology, and in return, he would credit us the month's rent, accept our damages attachment, and promise to have the item on site within a week to assess the internet issues. When we declined, he then got personal with us and revealed that his job that he worked so hard for may be at stake and asked us to reconsider. My girlfriend leans forward and says, there are communities in this neighborhood that may be more accepting of people like you, and you are welcome to leave. The property manager was replaced in a week with a super sweet older woman who not only gave us all the things the original property manager promised, but she also made it clear that her office was always open for anything we may need. I looked up the old property manager a few months later on LinkedIn. Still unemployed. Open's girlfriend's response smiling ear to ear. I love how she uses this open response. I would have been happy to see the feminist face. But she drops as she looked at him. I can feel the new partner as he came off. uneasy and uncomfortable and I totally hate to be the voice that ruins your day. So if this isn't for you, now's the time to watch another Don't Fuck video. I'll link one right here. Guys, I love you and with that said, let's go. My parents have always had a mutually toxic relationship. They've been fighting, screaming 
catch is destruction of each other's property, and then a short-term honeymoon phase, and I witnessed it all. It was a cycle. Not only did they do this to each other, but my mother would give us regular beatings, and my father would neglect us, allowing her to hurt us. My siblings and I would see it the worst on weekend. They would have events that lasted days, and often argued well into the late hours. My mother would even take us from home to our side of and have us stay with her family members for days, and sometimes weeks. This, of course, would run out of school and put us behind the house. I would often come to school tired after being kept away. Ha ha. Are you trying brilliant? What's another word? Nope. That is not a word I'd try again. Because of how strict my parents were. Ha ha. Are you trying to make up word? You are smartness. Because they insisted that they were meaningless. Wow. You're outsmarting the game. And and Great job. I hated that they would torment me and my siblings and then could be cuddly and lovey dovey. Brilliant. What's another word? Nope. That is not a word either. I made a decision to sabotage them at any chance I got. It was easy. Think. It's your brain superpower. And here is a list of Let's play I again. I stole money from my father in small amounts. I destroyed emotionally valuable items from each of them. I threw out food that they were trying to treat for themselves. I found receipts of purchases they were hiding from each other. I left them out for the other to buy. I made each of them think I was siding with them after arguing. Getting them to talk to me then took their dirty secrets back and forth to increase their distrust of each other. The funny part was, they never suspected it was me. I was just repeating the same behaviors that they'd already been doing, so they always assumed it was the other one. As the years passed, I knew I would be leaving the household when I was an adult, so I expanded on my plan. I knew that my younger siblings would suffer in a household with both of them together, especially after I left. I had been violated in childhood by one of my mother's family siblings didn't know, but my mother did. She knew what this person was and left me alone with him multiple times. She hey, 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 hey. the family had done that I would be responsible for breaking up the family. That was how I was of everything. People who had married in the uh, even accused me of lying, or accused me of enjoying it, and even asked me to take it all back. I had successfully set my family on fire. I left on schedule, and I cut off contact with my mother, and I had extremely limited contact with my father. I did, however, talk to my siblings constantly. My father stepped up, he cut my mother's family off, and didn't allow them to see my siblings anymore. He divorced my mother a while later. Once he had the means to take the youngest siblings away and live alone with them, my mother has extremely limited custody. The older ones have already moved out by the time. I am now living without any family in another state. I'm getting mental health. Hold on. How to get so many Robux. Try this. Robux. Robux. They have a far better life than I had. Heirs now. We don't talk that much about what happened and what I did for them. We still have a bond, and that's all I want. Pulling together enough courage to have that conversation with Dad, and exposing the mother's side of the family, even at risk of tearing the family apart, has got to be one of the bravest things ever. OP, you are a very, very good person, and your siblings are very lucky to have a person like you in their lives to look out for them. My friends, and that brings us to another end of our slash. Guys, 
I am sending everyone virtual hugs after that story. On a happier note, guys, if you want to hear some funny and entertaining stories, check out the last video where an entitled dad picked up with Mark Warren's instructor and gets put in his place. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you all, my friends. Selling your car doesn't have to be hard. Getting an online offer from CarMax, that's easy. Get a real offer on your car in just two minutes. CarMax, online.
Then suddenly, magically, Dick started talking about working on a payment schedule. He started sending me a hundred dollars every month, and the debt got down to a thousand dollars. I figured his wife must have got on his ass up, and I laughed to myself how whipped he was. But then the money stopped coming again, and then came the excuses. One day he told me that he was just going through a hard time financially right now, which I knew wasn't true. He still had a nice car, a nice house, etc. But it's not like I had printouts of his bank records that I could come up. On the exact same day he told me that, though, I was watching. What are you doing? <gasps> this is disgusting. <laughs> Second row, right down in front, just off to the right. Every time they zoomed in on a right handed batter, you could clearly see him. And this was in September, in the midst of the playoff race, so I knew those tickets were not cheap. It's no Perry Mason moment, but the thought of replying to his I'm having financial trouble email with a picture of him in those seats gave me a raging justice boner. So I was looking for a good image for him to use, but every time I paused the video, his face got somewhat out of focus. It was clearly him if you watched the video, but I still needed a still image that was also clearly him. Then in the seventh inning, a foul ball got caught two rows behind him, and they zoomed in. And there was Dick clear as day, sitting with his wife. And I'm thinking, aha, I got you now. The next morning I replied to his prior message by sending that screen capture of him. I figured even if I didn't get my money, at least I had one sweet moment of satisfaction of busting him there. I decided to send it to his wife too, just so she knew what was going on and how the money had stopped again. I remembered how quickly Dick's tune had changed the first time I included her. I even thought that maybe her being in the picture would make her light an even hotter fire under his ass this time. So I sent the picture, but didn't hear anything back from either of them. Two or three days went by, and nothing. Then I heard from the other employee I worked with, and he goes, You hear about Dick? And I said, No. What? His wife kicked him out and filed for a divorce. And I was like, Holy, no way. Yeah, apparently she was cheating on her. And I thought, Huh, I wonder how. And then, it hit me. What if that wasn't his wife in the picture, and I sent her that picture, and no way. I figured he was probably talking about the divorce, but he mentioned having financial trouble. That would make sense. I figured the divorce was already in the works before the picture. There's no way that me sending that picture had anything to do with his divorce. But nope, that was literally what happened. The woman at the game with him, not his wife. Apparently his wife knew the woman, though, and knew that Dick had lied about where he was that night and who he was with, and the storm of epic proportions took his phone. I ended up emailing her not long after and being like, um, hello there, I've been hearing some things, and I can't help thinking that the picture I sent might have been a part of it, and she said she'd be meeting to contact me to thank me. But anyway, she paid me the $1,000 he gave me, plus another $500 on top. I don't know if he thought he still owed me $1,500, or she purposely gave me the extra. Also, his nice car and house and all, it was really his wife. She was the one with all the money, meaning that he no longer has it. They got divorced and he moved away, and I have no idea what became of him. Honestly, considering everything that's happened, I kind of feel bad for him. But then I remember that there's no reason he couldn't have just paid me. Seriously, why not just pay? I just chalk it up to Dick having a lot of negative karma on his way, and I played a part in it. This has to be one of the greatest unintentional revenges I've ever read. Not only can he not run a business properly, he can't even cheat properly. Come on, man. Why are you taking that woman to a major sporting event? I would have loved to see the look on his face if a kiss cap caught him that night. Buck knows. Small business owners don't use business hours. Print a certificate 24-7. <laughs>
Fast forward two months. She starts acting distant. Not wanting to talk much on her scheduled calls. Or text that one or two word answer. We've been together six years. And she's never had a lot of stuff. Anyway, one day she's sad. I need some space. She asks someone who's 10,000 miles away for some space. She wants to find herself. So I remember back when we went at home. She had a guy who was always being borderline inappropriate. She loves me, blah, blah, blah. I don't say anything about receiving her text for two months. Then she finally admits to cheating. During this time, she pays our debt off, gets tattoos with him, which are matching I love you tattoos, goes to shows with him, buying clothes, etc., with the money that I make. So this is where the revenge starts. I could have freaked on the account for a month at that time, changed every password to every account to things that she won't guess. I blocked her on Facebook and my phone, so she has no way to contact me. She lost her car to repo a few months later, got kicked out of her place, and had to sell her prized shoes and purses just to stay afloat. I then found out that she got a job at her old restaurant where she works with him. I then have friends come to complain about the so I also have friends dine and dash, and they both get fired. She then tries to call my command and tell them that I'm abandoning her and that she can't provide for herself. My commander knows what's going on and he does nothing. Then about a month before I come back, she calls me from another number to tell me that she's pregnant and still has kid. Mind you, I'm still gone so we can't get divorced yet. She then moved away with her 10 hours from me. On April 24th, 2018, she called me five months pregnant to try and throw away asking where she should go. Apparently, they have a giant blow-up fight, and she tells him that she's leaving. She says she doesn't know where to go, and I simply say, sorry, not my problem anymore. Fast forward to January this year, she called me from a mutual friend's house. I'm all the way up! I'm all the way up! I'm all the And that, my friend, brings us to another end of our Flash Pro Revenge. If you guys missed the last episode of our Flash Pro Revenge, I'll link it right here. Go check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.